My husband watches most episodes of Grown Lady Chat, not all, but how much are you betting that he's going to click double fast on this one? Hey lady, welcome or welcome back to your new favorite talk show for Christian women, Grown Lady Chat. With me, your host, Dr. Sharonda Simone. As an inspirational and motivational speaker, my passion and purpose is to empower, strengthen, teach, enrich, energize, and motivate you to live God's purpose in your life. And I've decided that on our Monday episodes, I'm going to dedicate those episodes to giving you uplifting information and encouragement at the start of your week. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a transparent, very vulnerable moment that I had with my then boyfriend, now husband. And this conversation absolutely transformed the way I viewed life and I know that you're going to be blessed. Are you a woman who enjoys beautiful things? 34.5 Lifestyle Accessories has unique and elevated everyday pieces and also the perfect accessory for the special events in your life. Be sure to check out our collection by clicking the link below. Before I jump into today's information, I do want to say welcome if it's your first time clicking on one of these videos. Thank you so very much. It's not an accident that you are here. It is a divine appointment. Lady, trust me, you are going to be blessed. And of course, if you have been watching and you're already subscribed, you're already tuning in, chatting it up in the comments, thank you and welcome back. For nearly every episode, I like to remind you that I do random giveaways, all right? So a way for you to enter the giveaway is by chatting it up in the comments being engaged in the community, basically just showing up, all right? And if you do win one of the giveaway prizes, you could get a gift card, you could get home decor items, makeup, beauty, skincare, personal development tools, or faith-based resources. And the best way for you to chat it up in the comments and get engaged is by answering the question of the day. Today's question of the day is a fun one. If you could have one super power, what would it be and why? Let me know in the comments. And of course, I always pin the question of the day down below and I share my answer there as well. I met my husband in 2009 when I was in my first year of a highly stressful, very rigorous surgical residency in Pittsburgh. Now, I believed at that time, I believed that I was juggling this budding relationship with this amazing man and this rigorous, stressful work environment. Being a first year resident is stressful enough, but then I was also in a residency with nearly all men in a new city. And so I had a lot going on, right? Well, it wasn't until my husband, well, my boyfriend at that time, had a heart to heart conversation. We knew that at some point we were going to get married and the relationship was progressing. But here's the conversation that we had. And let me just give myself some kudos. If I hadn't had the maturity in that moment to take what he said without feeling like like the sting of embarrassment, then we probably would not have made it because I wouldn't have been able to handle it, all right? So we're having this conversation one day and he says to me, you know, you don't just become a wife after you say I do. The wedding doesn't make you a wife. You have to begin to do wife things before you actually get married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you can imagine how I felt. My face like dropped and I wanted to crawl under a rock, but that was after I felt some kind of way. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here's what I took away from that conversation. All right, after I picked myself back up and I was like, okay, don't get mad. Listen to what he's saying. Holy Spirit, help me. All right, that's like a common prayer that I say, you know, whether I'm talking to my husband or not. It's like, okay, if I feel like they're going to say something that could really hurt me, then I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to get what I need to get for the, from the conversation and leave all of the other negative things behind, right? Because as women, I don't know about you, but most women I talk to, your best friend could tell you something. They're correcting you and you take it and you might feel some kind of way, but it doesn't totally like ruin the rest of your day. You take it to heart, you think about it, you make the adjustments. Your mother can tell you something like that, your sister, even your father, but let it be the man you're in love with. Let it be your fiance, your husband, let it be your crush. And it's like, what? You can say that to me? You think of me like that? 
And now it's time for Dr. Sharonda Simone's random but helpful information. Lady, if you're like me, you probably throw out those little white packets when you get a new pair of shoes or a new purse and you don't think anything of it. But my mother told me that instead of tossing them out, I should keep them and here's why. We all know that those little packets are there to help absorb excess moisture, so they're a desiccant. You have purses in your closet that you don't use often. They're not in heavy rotation. Or what about your boots and gym shoes that you might not wear all the time because it's out of season? Lady, instead of tossing those packets out, keep them and put them in those garments or in those shoes, purses that you don't always grab. Or you can hop onto Amazon and get a whole pack of them and that way you can preserve your garments for as long as possible. You're welcome. I have to say that it is the grace of God and just maybe being mature enough or maybe not even realizing the magnitude, you know, of what he was saying. But in that moment, he told me, he was like, you have to begin to act as if, like start doing some of the things. Now I'm not talking about, you know, you and somebody talking, dating, and he hasn't talked about proposal or marriage and you're just playing house. Mm -mm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually beginning to do the selfless acts that are required in a healthy marriage. And I didn't realize at that time that I was prioritizing my life and my career and my needs over his. Now, yes, there is a balance. There's definitely some give and take. And in that phase of my life, I needed a level of selfishness to accomplish the goal because I had to be focused. I had to be driven. Like, you know, I was becoming a doctor, right? But at the same time, I still had to be aware of his needs in the relationship and make sure that I was doing what I could, when I could, to accommodate him as well. So when he said that to me, yeah, my gut reaction was to feel offended and to be hurt and like, oh, how dare you? I thought I was doing a good job. And in some ways I was, but then in other ways, I wasn't, okay? But what I took from that conversation that I've been able to use in all areas of my life is that you have to begin to act as if. Prepare for your blessing, prepare for that pivot, prepare for that change, prepare for the next phase that you're expecting to happen. Somebody is watching and you are praying for a baby. You and your husband are seeking God and you're petitioning and you're believing in faith that you will have a child, but you've not made any preparations. Maybe you're too afraid to, you don't want to let yourself dream or hope. No, act in faith. Faith without works is dead. If you believe that God is going to bless your womb with a child, then prepare that bedroom. I know so many women who have done that. They haven't told a bunch of people till after they got the positive ultrasound, but guess what? They prepared a room in their home. They prepared that nursery. They bought a dress. They bought a pair of pajamas, some little baby booties. They did that so that they could look at that room, look at that piece of clothing, look at that pacifier, look at that bib and say, Lord, I believe I'm moving in faith that you're going to bless my womb with a child. Maybe it's not even a baby. Maybe you're expecting you know, a promotion at your job or maybe a new job opportunity, or maybe you're expecting for your business to flourish. When I first started my jewelry line, I bought just a few of the packaging labels and I bought less than 100 of the little parcel packages that I would actually ship the orders out in. I bought just a few of the little satchels that I placed the jewelry in. And then Holy Spirit was like, what are you doing? Are you expecting for your business to just be a business or a thriving business? Are you acting in faith? And so it wasn't until I realized like, hey, you're thinking small, you're not preparing for what you're expecting God to do in your business. So then I went back on Amazon and I, I doubled up on everything. I have more than enough mailers now. I have more than enough of the satchels. I have more than enough of the items that I've curated and put together in each collection because I want to make sure that I am ready for the blessing. Each time I release a new product, I want to make sure I have enough for the blessing that I'm believing God has in store for my business. So lady, here's your motivation for today, whether it's a Monday or otherwise, you have to prepare for what you're expecting God to do in your life. We have to realize that God already completed all that he has to complete in our lives. He's not up there still, you know, putting things together at the last minute. You're believing for a baby. He's not up there wondering, oh wait, ooh, I forgot to put the ears and the nose. No, he has already created your child. It's just not manifested in the natural as yet. He's already created the customers who are going to buy from your business. He has already placed your job 
job promotion. It's already sitting there on the HR website waiting for you to click and press apply. But you also have to make sure that your home structure is set up to facilitate the new demands of your new job so that you don't get burned out. Okay. The degree that you want to get is already created. They already have your slot waiting, but you have to then now make sure you do the prerequisite classes and courses and you do your very best so that you can be accepted into the program because your position is already waiting for you. So we have to do the work as if prepare for the season that we're expecting God to have for us. And just as my husband, then boyfriend, called me out in love because apparently there were some situations of selfishness that I needed to work on, okay? I took the information, I squashed down the hurt in that moment and I was like, all right, Lord, how can I do what I need to do so that I can be the wife that I know you've called me to be? And again, I'm stressing the point, we're not playing house, okay? He and I had already discussed marriage and we were definitely on our way, we were courting. I just wanted to share that with you because there is somebody out there and you're expecting a major move from God. But I have to ask you, and I want for you to ask yourself in sincerity, are you prepared for that move? Are you prepared for that season? Have you set up the infrastructure in your life for that pivot, that promotion, that blessing? If you haven't, then now is the time to do so. Remember, faith without works is dead. All right, T-Lady, that is it for today's episode. I would love to hear your comments and feedback in the comment section, so be sure to chat it up, all right? Don't forget to answer the question of the day, and until Thursday, remember, I am Dr. Sharonda Simone, and I will either see you at the top or from the top, you decide. Bye.